The Reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jessie, travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you Brother Ford. I want to save these dates. Coming real quickly, February the 26th at 10 a.m., right here in Little Rock, Arkansas, I will be preaching at the Place of Harvest, 6401 West 32nd Street, here in the city of Little Rock. That's a 10 a.m. service, and then you know I'll be right here, 9101 Lou Drive at 6.30 that same night. So make plans to be with us all day, February 26th. 10 a.m. service, Place of Harvest, 6401 West 32nd Street, and then that night, 630, right here, 9101 Lou Drive. Then on March the 5th, 11 a.m. service, I'll be with the Eagle Saints Church at 3405 Baseline Road here in the city of Little Rock. That's Eagle Saints International Outreach Ministries, 11 a.m., March the 5th, 3405 South Baseline Road. Then on March the 26th, now make sure you write this down. March the 26th, there will be no service here at the Reality of the Gospel, 9101 Lou Drive. We will be at 10500 West Markham with the Faith Builders family right here in the city of Little Rock. Again, March the 26th, no service at 9101 Lou Drive, but at 6 p.m. March the 26th, we will be with the Faith Builders family at 10500 West Markham here in the city of Little Rock. And then on April the 2nd, 11 a.m. service, I'll be back with the Eagle Saints International Outreach Ministries at 3405 uh, Baseline Road. So we want to make sure to meet us there. And then get ready, get ready, plan your vacation. April the 10th through the 14th, we're having a faith clinic right here at 9101 Lou Drive at the Reality of the Gospel Ministry. That's right. We're going to have a faith clinic. We're going to get your faith together. Amen. Monday morning, 10 a.m. kicks it off. We're going to be here Monday through Friday, two services a day, the 10th through the 14th. That opening service, we're going to have uh, the faith technicians, Pastor Philip. Steele will be here the Monday morning and the Monday night. And then his wife, Pastor Michelle Steele, will be here Tuesday morning and Tuesday night. And then we're having Reverend Kathy Dorsch to come that Wednesday morning and Wednesday night. And then I will be your, your anchor man as always, but this time I'll be doing two. I'll be doing Thursday morning, Thursday night, Friday morning, and Friday night. That's a faith clinic. Every service is going to be on your faith. The just shall live by his faith. And you got to get your faith together for this hour that we're living in. Too many things are happening. Too many sneak attacks are hitting the saints. You know, uh, one of my friends said, if you live casually, you'll become a casualty. Well, that's not acceptable. You got to make a decision. When it comes to faith, you're not going to have a casual faith walk. So make plans to meet us here in all of these meetings. God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you right here. At 9101 Lou Drive. Come on here. Come back when they ready. You got to go it on and get something done. Can you understand? That's why a lot of folk who used to be in Pine Bluff had to move to Chicago. A lot of folk who used to be in Arkansas had to go to Detroit, had to go to California, had to go to New York. Why? Because if they'd have stayed here, they'd have got choked. They'd have got smothered with doubt, unbelief, and unwillingness to reach out. But I came to tell you in this hour, the Holy Ghost is back. He's back on the church again. He said, I got something for you. I had it for you. You weren't ready. I know Paul said I can't feed you with meat. I gotta give y'all milk. But I came to tell you the meat is back. Truth is back. We got stuck on knowledge. Now you know, y'all know for a while everybody had to be an apostle or a prophet or then they went bishop crazy. Come on here. Booker got a church. Five members make his wife the pastor so he can be a bishop. Ain't overseeing nothing. Come on here. But I came to tell you then all of a sudden everybody was an apostle. Ain't never established nothing. Can't organize nothing. Everything they got is right 
exactly but they need a title called apostle well I came to tell you they jumped from apostles and prophets and bishops and then everybody went doctor crazy come on you couldn't go nowhere without getting your doctorate everybody got a doctorate everybody want to be called doctor for it now I came to tell you I don't care whether they earned it bought it come on here oh God got it bestowed upon them they went doctorate crazy here's my issue you got your doctorate you got your paper on the wall and you're still ignorant come on here you still don't believe nothing you ain't went nowhere your revelation did not increase your knowledge didn't even increase you still don't know how to put a sermon together but you got a doctor behind your name you got initials behind your name that your mama didn't give you but let me tell you something you can tap into the river of God and the doc will be sitting at your feet you can tap into the the river of God. Hallelujah. And the apostle going to come see you. The prophet going to come let you give him a word. Why? Because the rivers are flowing. And when you start meeting the needs of the people, they'll call for you. You'll find folks in Pine Bluff don't even know your phone number. And somebody will call you out of Brazil. And you come over here and help us. We heard about you. We saw your page. You mean the page that everybody else unlike? You saw it? And you want me to come to Brazil? Um, there's a river in you, baby. And the river going to lose somebody. Somebody going to get caught in your current somebody gonna flow with you ah Glory to God. Have you noticed these rivers getting out of Eden? They come past in other lands. Went to Havilah. Now they don't want to Ethiopia. And the name of the third is Hedekiah. It means rapid. It come on here. It look like you've been, you know how it was on the day of Pentecost. Now they've been there for 10 days. Jesus was on the earth for 40 days. He left for 40. They've been in that room for 10. That's 50 days. It's the death burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Where's the promise of the Father? Jesus said, go tarry till you be endowed. They sit there. Listen, instead of growing, they were shrinking. When he walked to earth, he spoke to over 500 men. When you get to the upper room, you ain't got but 120. But on the day of Pentecost, when the rivers came, when the river came on the inside of them, and Peter stood up and released the river before the sun went down, we had 3,120. And they began to grow from there. What am I trying to tell you? When God started letting the river flow, it's going to move rapid. Does he, God, have given you time to get in position? He's given you time to be your core. He's giving you time to build your staff. But you've been sitting around just holding on. Ain't getting nothing in position. And all of a sudden, think about it. Think about it. In the book of Acts, what would you do? What would you do tonight? I don't know how many chairs in here. But I'm just going, let's just say it's 500 chairs in here. And, it's, and, and, and then there's 30 people in here. And then Sunday morning, 499 show up and say, we come to join. Uh, you ain't even got a secretary. At least when you was a Baptist, you had a secretary to come get the folk name. <laughs> that was kind of shrewd, huh? Okay, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's just keep moving. That which goes toward Assyria. Watch this. And the fourth river. What is God doing? Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. That's what he's doing. God is a God of multiplicity. God ain't trying to give you one car. He is, he, God to give you so many cars, folk can talk about you. I guess he got a little car lot over there. Look like he got a fleet of trucks, a fleet of beans. And uh, Well, you know why he gave them to him and not you? Because he'll give them away. You hold on to them. You'll be trying to drive a different car every day. Come on here. Ain't got enough money to put gas in one tank. Putting five dollars in here going to the store and coming back to the house but I came to tell you you're blessed what? To be a blessing so there's a river, hallelujah, that's inside of you, they want to go out of you with springs I got a young man there in Little Rock right now, I've watched him all of these years that we've been saved he used to come around with his little old mobile truck and wash my tent and he would always say, prophet, you can't pay me to wash your tent, uh uh, that's a seed, he would wash I me, mean, he would wash it right too, make sure it was clean mop it up real good and then once Summer when I took it down, he said, "Let me let me put some shellac on it. Let me let me get it ready for the winter." He would make sure my carpet stayed dry. I ran into him the other day. I said, "What you doing now?" He said, "I'm still washing buildings. I'm still washing cars. I'm still power washing houses." He said, "But now since COVID, everything was drying up. I got me a rental car business. Come on here." He said, "I'm renting cars now, and I got a used car lot. I'm trying to rivers, baby. One man, but he you know what he did. See, he ain't strung out because he know when I got business, you need." job. I got employees now. I'm trying to tell y'all. You sitting around here. All you want to do is braid hair in the kitchen illegally. You don't want to branch out and get no... I'm gonna get on this side because all the hair folk over there. Gonna... Look at y'all because y'all don't do hair. Y'all the clients over here somebody. <laughs> 
The rivers are flowing, and you got to make a decision. I'm not just going to sit here on my feet. It taken me five hours to braid your hair, and I ain't making but 275 in a day when I can go get me a salon. I got a little niece. Hallelujah. She went to, she went to college, y'all, and while she was in college, she found out she could make more money doing nails than she could with the degree she was going to college to get. Guess what she did? She dropped out of college and moved to Atlanta and found out the folk in Texas Texas and Arkansas was calling her. She was having to fly or drive back. So she left Atlanta and went to Texas and got to Texas and it broke out. But the clientele in Arkansas was looking at her page and said, look here, girl, if you come here. She came to Arkansas, amen, got her a shop. And she said, when I walked in there, she said, listen here, they're hitting, it's just a nail shop now. I mean, when you go get your nails done, how many times do you go get your nails done and get your feet done in the same place at a sister's shop? Come on now. And so she said, oh, I got to do you. I got I to gotta do your feet and your nails. And she said, now you see that right there? And I want to do your hair too. She said, I want this to be a one-stop shop. When you walk up in here, listen here. See, she got bank on her mind. And then her, then I, she, listen, and the girl ain't even saved. The boyfriend told her, and you know, we got all this space over here. I can see a boutique. Now she got a boutique in the corner. One woman, rivers, baby. I'm talking about rivers are flowing. See, when I say rivers, you just think, amen, man. The lame to walk in the blind to see that's one river, but that river is coming out of you. That's a river of healing, that's, a, that's an economic river, that's a river of commerce in you. That's a river of economic. See, you got to understand you need some money in this hour, but God don't want you to work yourself into a frenzy trying to get the money. See, if you stop trying to babysit three babies and start thinking franchise and daycare. See, when you start thinking like that, then next thing is, well, well, I might well do senior care too. I'm talking about rivers, baby, and we got to start thinking bigger. We got to start realizing when God said rivers shall flow out of your belly. So you ain't got to worry about these folk around me. Don't worry about these folk around you. Do you a market analysis. If all these folk do around you is chew bubble gum, get you a bubble gum machine and put it in the laundromat. Come over here. Let them go chew your bubble gum while you go head on and do something. My wife and I got a friend. That's what they did. Hallelujah. They was working and all of a sudden they went and bought some gum machines and started setting them in every every laundromat in their city there in Louisiana. And before you know it, he said, man, I'm making 2500 a month on gum machines in the laundromat. So he said, I'm going to put a couple in the grocery store. Watch this. When the, when, the, when the owner of the laundromat starts seeing it, every time they come in there, the machines would be empty and he never got no report of burglary. He, one day he went in there and the man said, well, I'm going I'm I'm to need you to uh, take your machine out. I bought me a couple. <laughs> he said, you, you going to use my place to make all this money. I'm going to do what you're doing. See, he didn't have no idea, but he caught one from somebody. To let your river flow, you might create a pond for somebody else. Let them rivers in you begin to flow. God want to bring you up, but you ain't got to beg nobody. You ain't got to change the length of your skirt. Ah, come on here. You ain't got to compromise your character and your integrity. And the man, the woman that walked off and left you, just let them know they made the mistake. You made the millions. Come on now. God is trying to raise you up because there's rivers of living water flowing out your belly, and it's not a religious thing. I want to save these dates. Coming real quickly, February the 26th at 10 a.m. Right here in Little Rock, Arkansas, I will be preaching at the Place of Harvest, 6401 West 32nd Street here in the city of Little Rock. That's a 10 a.m. service. And then, you know, I'll be right here, 9101 Lou Drive at 630 that same night. So make plans to be with us all day, February 26th. 10 a.m. service, place of harvest, 6401 West 32nd Street, and then that night, 630, right here, 9101 Lou Drive. Then on March the 5th, 11 a.m. service, I'll be with the Eagle Saints Church at 3405 Baseline Road here in the city of Little Rock. That's Eagle Saints International Outreach Ministries, 11 a.m., March the 5th, 3405 South Baseline Road. Then on March the 26th, now make sure you write this down. March the 26th, there will be no service here at the Reality of the Gospel, 9101 Lou Drive. We will be at 10500 West Markham with the Faith Builders family right here in the city of Little Rock. Again, March the 26th, 
No service at 9101 Lou Drive, but at 6 p.m., March the 26th, we will be with the Faith Builders family at 10500 West Markham here in the city of Little Rock. And then on April the 2nd, 11 a.m. service, I'll be back with the Eagles Saints International Outreach Ministries at 3405 uh, Baseline Road. So we want to make sure to meet us there. And then get ready, get ready, plan your vacation. April the 10th through the 14th, we're having a faith clinic right here at 9101 Lou Drive at the Reality of the Gospel Ministry. That's right. We're going to have a faith clinic. We're going to get your faith together. Amen. Monday morning, 10 a.m. kicks it off. We're going to be here Monday through Friday, two services a day, the 10th through the 14th. That opening service, we're going to have uh, the faith technicians, Pastor Philip. Steele will be here the Monday morning and the Monday night. And then his wife, Pastor Michelle Steele, will be here Tuesday morning and Tuesday night. And then we're having Reverend Kathy Dorsch to come that Wednesday morning and Wednesday night. And then I will be your, your anchor man as always, but this time I'll be doing two. I'll be doing Thursday morning, Thursday night, Friday morning, and Friday night. That's a faith clinic. Every service is going to be on your faith. The just shall live by his faith. And you got to get your faith together for this hour that we're living in. Too many things are happening. Too many sneak attacks are hitting the saints. You know, uh, one of my friends said, if you live casually, you'll become a casualty. Well, that's not acceptable. You got to make a decision. When it comes to faith, you're not going to have a casual faith walk. So make plans to meet us here in all of these meetings. God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you right here. At 9101 Lou Drive. God bless you, Pastor Shaw. Hallelujah. The last river. This last river here, the fourth river. The fourth river. With this good measure, pressed down, shaking together what? And running over. This last river in Genesis 2 and 14. It's called Euphrates. Y'all read about that in the history book right next to the Nile River, didn't you? Uh-huh. But it's called fruitfulness. And the root word means to break forth rushing. See, some of you think you're behind time, but God told you I redeemed time. God told you I'm going to restore the years at the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm. You sitting down in the mullet grubs. I can't believe I should have left that rascal 15 years before I did. I should have never got with that booger. You acting like it's over. Like I wasted some energy. I wasted some time. God said just give yourself to me. I got a river to flow out of you. And a Listen, they'll propel you. They'll catapult you. Have you ever seen a real river break loose in a real storm? And I'm trying to tell you that river used to be called you used to take your boat out there. Brother, when that thunder come, that lightning come, that flood come, we didn't get the blowing. That river moving so fast, you done took your boat off the dock and drug it to the house because you don't want to get swept away. Well, I came to tell you, rivers are flowing. 2023, God told me, hallelujah, that the wind is blowing, the rivers are flowing, and there's coming a Holy Ghost outpouring. And you got to understand the river ain't just a river for church. It ain't just a river of religion. It's a river of deliverance. It's a river of commerce. E-commerce is coming forth. You got to understand God that promised you he's going to bless you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. God done told you he's going to give you a hundredfold return. God done told you he multiplied the seed sown. Why well, came to tell you the seed needs some water and the rivers of living water are about to flow out of your belly. Y'all sitting right here looking for a job while other folks are starting businesses. And you sitting around, you sitting down on your expertise. Well, child, you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get out there. You used to say that when you had a job. You done lost your job, you still ain't doing nothing. You ought to get on out there and do something. <laughs> I wish y'all could see some of the stuff that I see about my daughter. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about vision. I'm talking about letters that we actually read. Yeah, I know y'all get to see the reviews on the internet, but I'm telling you, amen, letters. The girl been is just really three years old. And, and another day, she was in the top 10 wedding co co caterers in Arkansas. Three years old, and she already in the top 10. And guess what? She, she just went full time one year. She was still a dental assistant doing her business on weekends and evenings until she made a decision to take it to the next level. I got to leave the dentist 
dentist's office and she gave the dentist a 30 day notice and said I'm getting ready to go take this thing to another level we sitting around here well you know you know folk folk doing good right now as soon as I quit my job they gonna quit calling me so I better keep this job you know what you just did you just anchored yourself to unbelief and doubt what am I telling you when you, you should know on the inside when the river trying to get out when the river trying to break loose when the river trying to overflow the banks but now I want to contain my water no baby you got to help that's a well the well you contain the river but you got to let the river flow the river gonna help somebody else the river gonna deliver somebody else some of you got a recipe that could have made you a millionaire I ain't sharing my recipe with nobody you ain't get oh, I, I, child I just cooked it when I feel like I want to eat it and everybody in county you know, made a request for it and offered to pay you actually how much I don't charge that's your problem you don't know when to go from seed time to step over in the franchise. I know what my daughter told my wife. I told my wife, she said, babe, she said, Mama, I learned this from you. You've been doing this free for years. She said, I'm going to make some money on this. My wife said, well, I'm sowing a seed. She said, you're going to sow your seed. I'm going to make some money doing this. So what I'm trying to tell you, there comes a time, at least you ought to be able to touch somebody close to you. Somebody ought to be, but you know, well, you know. You know what you got? You got a million excuses instead of a million dollars. <laughs> Ezekiel, 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 Ezekiel. Ezekiel 47, Ezekiel 47. No, no, no. God just told me the rivers are flowing. And I begin, you know, now you know how first thing you're going to think about, because we're reading the Bible, you think about rivers of deliverance, rivers of healing. That's why the, uh, uh, the song, I got, a river fl- I got a river of life flowing out of me, makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. I came to tell you, we need the lame to walk. We need the blind to see. But look around right now. We're talking about overthrowing Roe versus Wade. What are we going to do with all these babies that they're not going to, but they're in the board of 60 million. So what we gonna do with the 60 million now they're gonna live? I don't know. I know one thing. I ain't finna adopt now. And I ain't no foster parent either. Well, did you ever think you could own the adoption agency in the foster parent home? See, you gotta think outside the box. You can't think past the block. Don't go too far. See that sign say stop? That's what it means. Stop right there. I'll tell you how my daughter used to talk when she was a, when she was a little girl. I, t- I was teaching her how to drive, and so time coming to get a license. I'm telling her, I said, "Baby, you see that sound right there?" She said, "Daddy, that's just a suggestion." <laughs> yeah, she got a little humor too. But what I'm trying to tell you is. Everything the devil suggests to you to do, you don't have to do it. He ain't your boss. He's not your Lord. Don't you let fear make suggestions that you follow. Tap into the Holy Ghost and do what he do. See, some of you don't understand. Your church that you planted in is a part of your purpose. But see, the devil gets you looked at what they're not letting you do, what they're not saying. No, 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 no. See, what they're doing is activating an anointing in you. What they're doing is stirring up that river that's in you. I had a boy come to me, Pastor Shaw, talking about, I want you to be my spiritual father. Father, I said, why? Well, my church that I grew, my pastor's church, and so since my church bigger than his, I don't think I should let him be over me. I said, well, I don't have a church. So, how that work? Well, and I said, let, me, let, let me sober you up, young man. Let me, let me say, you told me you would not be married today if it wasn't for your pastor. I said, it looked like you got more memos than he got, but he got more wisdom than you do. So you need to stay with your pastor. But see, some people are so, you know, you want me to be your future father? Yeah. I got another son. Another orphan you just created. Y'all in Ezekiel waiting on me? 47, Ezekiel 47, if I didn't tell you. I'm sure I did. Ezekiel 47 in verse 1. Afterwards... He brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward, for the forefront of the house stood toward the east. And the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house, at the south side of the altar. Listen here. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without into the utter gate, by the way that looked eastward, and behold, there ran out waters, plural 
Pharaoh out of the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits. Remember, a cubit is a foot and a half. A cubit is 18 inches. He measured a thousand cubits. And he brought me through the waters and that were uh, on the uh, aisles. And again, he, uh, um, he measured a thousand and he brought me through. He said, I'm at a thousand cubits now. He brought me through the water. The waters were to the knees. And again, he measured. He then took him from the ankle to the knees. And he measured a thousand. And he brought me through the waters. To the water, not to my loins. Afterward, he measured a thousand. And it was water that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen. Waters to swim in. A river that could not be passed over. Do y'all know what you just saw? You just saw, amen, four times 1,800 is 1,500 square. Heaven is 1,500 miles square. He just gave you a type and a shadow of what the rivers is trying to take you into. When you get to heaven, hallelujah, there's the rivers of living water right there producing fruit that produces every month. But I'm trying to get you to understand. He said, I was in water at my ankle. How many of the folk that can't swim are comfortable with their ankles wet? Folk that can't swim are comfortable in knee deep water. Why? Because all I got to do is stand up. I can wait. I play volleyball out here with y'all. Come on. I even get on the floor to walk because if I flip over, all I I gotta do is stand up. When the water go to get waist deep, they get a little nervous, but they still out there, cause they still know if I stand up, as long as I stay on my feet, I'm gonna be above the water. When the water get around your neck, now you start, oh well, <laughs> I'll be over here on the bank. But then when it gets to the water, only you can do is swim in it. And he said, this is a river that cannot be overcome. You can't pass over. What that mean? You can't swim that long. Now, I can swim decent, but I can't swim no river. Come on here. Come on. That's the time you got to know how to float. I got cousins, nieces, nephews. Bookers can float all day. What you do when you float, you ain't got nothing to do but let it carry you. I came to tell you the rivers want to carry you. But even when they carry you, you got a part you got to play. You got to yield to the river. You got to yield to the current. You got to go with the flow. And God told me the rivers are flowing. And he got a river moving. I came to tell you. He gave you progression. He gave you the law of progression. He let you get your ankles wet. So you can start working with your mindset. Because you know how some of y'all like my dad. You know, old generation. I said, Daddy, you want to go to Africa? He said, we're going to drive. I said, we can't drive to Africa. I said, we can catch a plane or we can catch a boat. He said, I can't drink that much water. And God didn't give me wings. So I mean, guess what? He ain't never been nowhere he couldn't drive. But I came to tell you, that's how some of us are right now. We won't go nowhere in the spirit that we ain't in control. And I'm not talking about getting loony, but I'm talking about you got to learn to yield and realize God is smarter than your degree. You got to learn that praise God. He gave you the, the consecration and the patience to go to school to get the degree. But he didn't want that degree to be a plateau. He wants you to understand that was just a thing to recognize you at the door. But I got so much more to release in you because God got a river now. God wants you to be multifaceted. And you don't want you just to be a preacher, and that's all you can do. He wants you to be a preacher that can walk up in the business world and deal and handle your business and let them know, yes, I'm a preacher, but I'm anointed for more than just declaring what thus saith the Lord. I got a business and nothing on me too. I didn't come here to get ran over. I didn't come here to get railroaded. I came here to tell you what God told me to do, and this is what we're gonna do. Courage through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety. Send $8 for compact disc or $20 for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries, Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.